Welcome to Nursing School Explained and this video in the assessment series about auscultating the patient's lungs. Now, whenever we assess the patient's lungs, we have to make sure that we assess the front anteriorly as well as the back posteriorly. And we always want to make sure that we compare the right and the left sides. And so again, like everything that we do in nursing, we want to approach this in a very methodical way. And we always want to make our way from the top to the bottom and then compare right to left or left to right at the same time. And really you should anteriorly and posteriorly have at least 10 locations each. So that would mean five on the left and five on the right side, compare right and left sides and then listen for a full breath cycle. That is probably the most important part because you want to make sure that you listen, listen for the full inspiration as well as the expiration because certain lung sounds may only be heard on the expiration. So if you hurry through it and you only listen when the patient inhale, you might miss some abnormalities. And it's also very important to give the patient clear instructions. And um, patients sometimes they try and help us and make our job a little bit easier and they sometimes breathe in and out through their mouth and they make some, so some sounds with it. <laughs> so if they do that, it's really impossible for us to detect if their lungs sound abnormal because they're making those sounds with the voice box. So what I recommend is that you tell the patient, I'm going to place my stethoscopes on your chest in different locations to listen to your lungs. Every time I place my stethoscope and on your chest, please inhale through the nose and exhale through the mouth. Take slow, deep breaths. And in case you start to feel dizzy, please let me know and we'll take a little bit of a break. Um, and the slow breaths are very important because if you do it too quickly and we're going to have about 20 locations each, the patient might be actually hyperventilating and then that might make them dizzy. So take your time, listen, and make sure you give your patient correct and precise, clear instructions. And then as for the location, so here we have the front and the back side of the patient. We really want to stay away from any bones because if we listen over bones, we're not going to really listen to the patient's lung. So in the front, we have to stay away from the sternum and then also we have to stay in between the ribs in these intercostal spaces so that we really listen to the lungs. Also, we need to make sure that we have good contact with the stethoscope on the patient's skin so that we can uh, make sure that we get the best sounds possible. And believe it or not, but the first location that you should listen to is right here in this triangle above the patient's clavicle because the lungs go all the way up to the chest cavity here so if you're not listening here, you might miss something. So in this case here, we would start with the patient anteriorly, right and left above the clavicle, and then just work our way down, comparing right to left. And then once we get to the end of the sternum here, we wanna move out to the sides because the lungs take up the entire chest cavity of the patient. And so then we wanna move out to the sides and we also wanna stay away from breast tissue because that may, might make the sound more dull because there's more tissue in the way between the stethoscopes and the lungs. So then we move our way out. And here on the sides, I've kind of drawn a half circle. And that means we need to make sure we address this mid-clavicular line. Remember, since the heart sits mostly on the left side of the chest, the left side of the lungs has two lobes, where the right lung has three lobes. And the right middle lobe is the best location to auscultate for it is in that mid-clavicular line on that right side. So if you don't take your time and listen to that, you might, mean, you might miss an abnormality there. And right middle lobe pneumonia is fairly common. So make sure that you address the mid-clavicular line on both sides and you kind of wrap your way around the patient's chest all the way to the sides of the ribs here. Now, posteriorly, we want to avoid the scapula, the shoulder blades, because just like the sternum, we're not going to be listening or hearing the sounds conducted in the way that it's going to be able, allow us to identify 
any abnormalities. Again, we want to stay away from the rib area, so go into these intercostal spaces. And there is um, the other anatomical landmark we need to stay away from is the patient's spine, because again, that's bone. So really, we want to again start above the shoulder blades here in the patient's back, and then work our way down between the shoulder blades and the spine. And again, comparing right to left, left to right as we march our way down. And then as we come to the lower lobes here, we again want to march out to the sides on the patient's back and then address that midclavicular line, either on the front or back, or maybe even it's best if you do it um, both front and back. And a little caveat here, if the patient is able to sit up, that's perfectly fine. Have them sit up, listen to their back. If they are unable to, for whatever reason, you can ask them to turn to their sides so that they're now laying on their back and you can be behind them listening to their lungs. It might be a little bit challenging to get into this midclavicular line on the patient that the, on the side that the patient is lying on. So you might need a little bit of extra help. Maybe somebody else can help you tilt the patient a little more so you have access to that side or maybe address it when they're still flat and put your stethoscope on that side that they're eventually going to lay on. So just something to think about. Now what are we listening for? Um, there are three different lung sounds that we can hear and those are bronchial, bronchial vesicular and vesicular lung sounds and they really relate to the anatomy of the respiratory system. So here we have our trachea and then the bronchioles, the, the bronchi, and then the bronchioles and the alveoli. So it really goes from a diameter of the trachea that is fairly thick down to the bronchi, down, down to the bronchioles, and then the alveoli are the smallest airways where the gas exchange happens. So if you've ever been snorkeling, for example, and you breathe through the snorkel tube, then that is a fairly thick tube and the sound that you're going to hear is going to be very loud and kind of harsh and hollow sounding. It's very similar here with the trachea. The larger the airway, the more hollow it's going to sound. But if you breathe through a straw, for example, it's much narrower and less air can pass through. Therefore, the sound won't be as loud and as hollow sounding. So the same principle applies here. So our bronchial breath sounds are over the large and upper airways. They are high pitched and hollow sounding because of that larger airway diameter. Typically the inspiration is shorter and the expiration is longer. Then when we move down, we have bronchovesicular breath sounds. So they are kind of in the medium, um, medium sized airways here in the bilateral bronchi. So the ones that actually already split off the trachea and they have that medium pitch and because they're in the middle here inspiration and expiration the length of the two respiratory cycles is going to be equal so same amount of time inspiration versus expiration is what we're going to hear now down in the very lower lung fields the alveoli we're going to hear vesicular breath sounds which are in the lung periphery, so all the way on the diameter, and they're going to be more low pitched because now the airway diameters are very small. Um, the inspiration is longer and the expiration is shorter, and that's just because it takes a longer time for the <clears throat> air to enter the lungs, so that's the inspiratory cycle is longer, and then it takes less time to exhale. Thank you for watching this video on the auscultation of the lung sounds. Please also watch my other video on auscultating heart sounds as well as other assessment techniques such as percussion. You can find those in the physical assessment technique playlist. Thanks so much for watching Nursing School Explain and I'll see you soon.